blackheads. Even the name conjures up images of something we'd rather avoid, let alone see on our faces. Unfortunately, blackheads are a common problem and solving them is usually a high priority. Luckily, K-Beauty is all over it. Welcome to The Korean Beauty Show, where we're talking all things Korean skincare, makeup, and more. If you want to learn about the hottest trending products and ingredients straight from South Korea, then this is the podcast for you. Each week, we'll be diving in to take a look at the latest trends, as well as all the tips and tricks you need to perfect your K-beauty routine. I'm your host, Lauren Lee, professional K-beauty expert and founder of Korean beauty platform Style Story. Hello and welcome back. You're here again for another episode of the Korean Beauty Show podcast. I'm your host, Lauren Lee, and I am super pumped to talk to you today about some of my favorite fixes for a really, really common problem, and that is blackheads. So if you have blackheads, if you hate blackheads, stick around because today's topic, today's episode is all for you guys. If you are new to the show, then first of all, a big welcome to you. I'm really happy that you're hanging out with us today. I hope that I have something that you will be interested to learn about in today's topic. And if so, I would love for you to stick around and subscribe so that you don't miss any more episodes. For those of us who have been around for a while, I'm actually going to start today's episode with something a little bit different. And tell me if you like it. Tell me if you're a fan of this or not. You can come over and find me on Instagram at lauren.kbeauty. I'm going to start doing a K-beauty news section at the beginning of our episodes. I'm not sure yet whether I'll do it every week or just some weeks. You'll have to let me know if you like it, if you think it's boring. Um, I'm open to feedback because this is the first time I'm doing it. But what I was thinking of doing was running through some of the key things that are being talked about in the industry at the moment uh, here in Korea, the K-beauty industry, uh, just so that you guys have a flavor for what's actually trending, what's actually being talked about. So the first thing, the biggest thing I think that is going on here at the moment, big scandal, it's been going on basically since last year, since December last year, and that is the sunscreen scandal. So for those of you that have missed it, Since last year, there have been a continuous round of various different Korean SPF and sunscreen products that have been pulled from the market, been taken away from from sale. Basically, they're not selling them anymore because they have been found to have failed their SPF tests. Now, most of these products were previously being marketed as SPF 50 plus sunscreen products and one by one a lot of companies have just quietly pulled them from sale some have released the data from the independent testing that was actually done on the products and shown you know what the real SPF score was in inverted commas Uh, and some of them are shockingly low I think Claire's recently revealed that one of their products that they were claiming to be SPF 50 plus was actually SPF 12.4 to 25. So a very big range that is much, much lower than what they were promising people. Uh, I know Crave Beauty pulled their sunscreen without even revealing what the real results were, which has led to a whole heap of speculation about what that means and if that means it's really, really bad or whether there are legal reasons that they can or can't share that kind of information. The first brand that was caught up in the scandal was, of course, Purito. So their sunscreen product was revealed by uh, some European labs to have only achieved a rating of SPF 19. Now, Purito, my understanding is, did uh, some other tests. In fact, they actually reached out to Star Story in Australia and asked us if we could help them do testing for their product uh, in Australia. Um, But obviously... 
In Australia, none of these products we have ever been able to sell on our website site style story, and that is because none of them have been submitted for review or ever tested or listed by the TGA, which is our regulatory authority in Australia for sunscreens. So in order to be marketed as a sunscreen product, it is necessary to go through a whole testing process in Australia, and that involves submitting test results for the individual sunscreen formula. So basically what has happened in Korea is that all of these brands, none of which ever should have been sold in Australia, uh, but were being sold in a whole range of different countries and places and marketed as having a specific SPF value, it has come out that they didn't have the value that they were being marketed as. And even worse, in my opinion, is that most of these brands, it looks like they never even bothered to independently test their sunscreen at all. Basically, they just took what the manufacturer said at face value and were like, yep, cool, that's good enough for us. We're just going to market the hell out of it and sell it everywhere we can, which is really, really problematic for a lot of different reasons. And the talk in the industry at the moment is that, well, they were allowed to do that because that's legal under Korean law. There is a section of the Cosmetics Act that allows for companies to essentially piggyback off the back of the results of a product that has been tested and has passed its testing if, and this is the key point, they are using the same active ingredients, so the same UV filters, and then also at the same percentage. So basically, it is a carte blanche for companies to recreate a product using the exact same filters and never bother to test it, and that's okay under the law. Uh, That is really, really problematic for so many reasons. Uh, And a lot of these brands are big brands too, like brands that put a lot of money behind marketing their products, uh, particularly to overseas markets. So um, they are getting a fair bit of blowback, obviously, from consumers who are rightfully very, very angry about it. Um, I have my own personal (laughs) views on whether a loophole like that should exist law and I personally believe that that it's a terrible idea because these products are drugs. They're being regulated as drugs. They're being regulated as something that is designed to prevent skin cancer to protect you from skin cancer. So the fact that there is a loophole that basically means that the companies don't ever have to test the product but yet they can still claim the same level of SPF just literally blows my mind. Um My understanding is that the reason that loophole exists is to save companies money. Obviously, testing products on like, you know, live people to test the results and things like that, it costs a lot of money. You need to pay all of the various participants in the testing process. You need to then pay the lab. Uh, There's lots of machinery and things like that that is involved. So it isn't a cheap process. And, you know, for products, I guess, that are not sunscreen, I think there are probably legitimate reasons why if you have worked out in a a clinical trial, for example, that 5% of niacinamide is uh, a a good enough amount to get proper results from it, I can understand why you can say to certain companies, okay, 5% niacinamide, if you've got that in it, then you're allowed to make X, Y, and Z claims about your product. That makes sense to me. You know, in the same way that um, AHAs and BHAs at differing percentages, people know what the most effective percentages are. And then obviously, if you mess around with that, it becomes more irritating. But when it comes to something like sunscreen, even a tiny, tiny change in the formula. So changing it from a cream type to an essence type, changing it from a cream to a spray type has a really, really big impact on how it performs on the skin and the level of protection that it offers. And I feel like the fact that there are people out there that are willing to manufacture products knowing that Um, It puts their ethics into question for sure, but it also puts into question the formulators because there is no formulator that is worth anything that wouldn't know that that changes it so significantly. Like I can say for myself, having gone through the process and formulated skincare products, the tiniest, the teeniest, tiniest, what you and I would think would be insignificant 
change to the formula with something like fragrance or whatnot. Like 0. Point something percent has a huge impact on the product and the way it feels and performs and things like that. So I don't buy the argument that people wouldn't have known. That to me just seems very yeah, very difficult to believe that anyone that is in the business of manufacturing cosmetic products wouldn't have known that. Uh, But I digress. So that is the news of the moment at the moment in K-beauty in Korea. And obviously outside of Korea, this is what everyone is talking about. I don't think this is going to go away anytime soon. There's been so many products that have already been affected by this. Obviously, this is an area that of the industry that is ripe for reform. Uh, so I am very keen to see how people in the industry are going to respond to this, how the Korean food and drug Uh, agency is going to respond to this because I think this is probably a loophole that needs to be closed up. Uh, But anyway, watch this space. So that is it for my little K-beauty news segment for this week. But let me know if you're feeling it. If you are not interested at all and just want me to get on with the episode, let me know that as well. All right. So on to the meat and potatoes of the episode. We are talking about blackheads today. So let's take a look at what blackheads actually are. So they're small bumps that appear on your skin. You've probably seen them before, but they're caused by clogged hair follicles. And why they're called blackheads is pretty simple. The surface of the bump itself looks black. So they form when a clog or a plug develops in the opening of the hair follicles in your skin. That's why they happen. How to get rid of them is obviously a whole different beast. Uh, There are lots of different things that you can do. Uh, My favorite personally involves a multi-pronged approach using a couple of different products. Now, this is the first way that I would suggest trying to tackle them. First, start off with a double cleanse. So this is a really important part of the K-beauty routine. We have talked about it on many episodes before. And if you're not familiar with it, if you go back, scroll back in your podcast feed, there is an entire episode dedicated just to the double cleanse method. So I would definitely recommend having a listen to that. So why this is so good for blackheads in particular is because it gets rid of your makeup and your dirt. Anything that accumulates on your face during the day, this will get rid of that. And that is really, really important when it comes to removing blackheads, obviously, because it is an accumulation of things in the pores. So how you do it is you are going to want to start off with an oil-based cleanser. So be that a cleansing oil, a cleansing balm, whatever you prefer to use as your first cleanse, and then follow up with a foaming cleanser afterwards. So two that I'm using in my routine at the moment, I'm using Subi's Bare Skin Balm as the first cleanse, and then my trusty Tosawong Enzyme Powder Wash as the second one. That is a really great combination of a cleansing balm and a foaming cleanser and it gets everything off gently without you you don't need to tug rub pull at your skin you don't need wipes you don't need um you know the makeup remover pads or anything like that it just melts it away so that is how i would recommend starting now the other important thing is to make sure that you're exfoliating. Exfoliators clear out the dead skin and promote cell turnover. And that's really important if you're talking about preventing blocked hair follicles. And as we talked about, that is what causes blackheads. The thing to remember when, when we're talking about exfoliating is obviously just don't scrub too hard and don't do it too often. Once or twice a week for most people is plenty. You can up it a little bit if you've got oily skin. Now, the third thing I would recommend using if you're trying to tackle blackheads is a BHA, so a beta hydroxy acid. And this is because they work to degunk your pores, essentially. That's the scientific explanation. Um, So how they work, BHAs are oil soluble. So they penetrate through the oil that's clogging your pores and exfoliate all of the dead skin cells that have built up inside. And the other good thing about them is that they have anti-inflammatory and also antibacterial properties. They can help to actually reshape your pores 
And the other good thing is that they allow your other skincare products to better penetrate your skin. So uh, the holy trinity would be to do your double cleanse, exfoliate, and then use a BHA. So you can exfoliate twice a week uh, and then you can use your BHA. Now, I'm just going to break this episode up by reading out one of the reviews that was left on Facebook for the podcast. So Style Story has a Facebook page. I think it is stylestory.au, AU being for Australia. But this is one of the reviews that was left. It says, I love the range of products and the podcast. Lauren explains everything in an easy way and she is always bringing good subjects to the table. So thank you so much to the lovely listener who left that review. Uh, And guys, you know, I would love you guys to leave a review if you have time as well. You can leave one on Facebook. You can leave one on on your podcast app, basically anywhere you would like to leave it, I will find it and I will read it out. So that is just a quick reminder if you haven't already to leave a little review if you have enjoyed anything that you've listened to. Now, the next tip that I have is regular clay masking. This can help as well with your blackheads. And the reason is that clay works almost like a vacuum on the face. So it suctions out dirt and impurities and blackheads. And when it comes to clay masks, I think most people think of them as just, you know, you put put it all over your face, leave it on for five, 10 minutes, and then wash it off. And that is definitely a way that you can use clay masks, but you can also use them two other ways. The first one is as a spot treatment for any individual acne spots. So if you have a pimple pop up, you can actually put the clay mask just on the spot and then leave it overnight and it'll dry it out for you. But obviously you wouldn't do that for your whole face because that would be a bit of a disaster. Um, The second way is to remove blackheads and The way that you can do that is basically put the clay mask onto the places where you would normally put like a strip mask, those pore strip masks. So you can actually just do like your really, really oily parts rather than doing your whole face. And that's a really great way to do it if you do have, you know, drier skin. The other thing I would say as a fellow sufferer of dry skin is if you are clay masking, don't let the clay mask dry on your face. Wash it off before it dries down. That is the best tip that I have. You will still get the benefits of it, but you don't want to let it get to that stage where it gets cracked and dry. That is too late for dry skin. So just wash it off before that and you will avoid that really awful tightening, like cracking feeling that you can get from some clay masks. The other thing when it comes to managing blackheads is to look out for the type of moisturizer that you're using. If you're really prone to blackheads, I would recommend avoid using a really heavy moisturizer um, and just opt for something a bit light instead. Still hydrating, but light. So now I'm going to run you through some of my favorite K-Beauty products that are great for busting blackheads. So I've divided it up into like basic skincare products and then I've got some special treatments that are perfect for targeting blackheads. So the basic skincare products that you can use are things like Cosrx's BHA Blackhead Power Liquid. So this is a great way to prevent the formation of blemishes and and, uh, obviously blackheads before they even occur. And that's because it's oil soluble. It clears out that dead skin from deep within the pores and it can minimize their appearance and just help to prevent blackheads. So that's a great one. Very accessible. I think everyone can find that somewhere. Uh, April B, which is spelt A-P-L-B, has a great eggplant peeling pad toner. Uh, So these are really, really great for people that tend towards the more oily side because they remove dirt sebum, dead skin cells, and also just any unwanted gunk that's in your pores. Uh, And being that they're pads, you can easily use them on the go as well. 
Uh, so that's another really great just basic option to help prevent blackheads sort of taking taking root. The other product that I really love for basic skincare and care for blackheads is JJ Young's Black Cleansing Stick. So it is a pH balanced uh, cleansing and exfoliating stick for oily and combination skin, but you can actually use it every day as part of your routine because it is pH balanced. It's nice and gentle, but it just really grabs onto any of those impurities that are sticking around. So that is a great one to look out for. Uh, just make sure if you are using a cleansing stick type product that you do uh, rub the stick down with some water after each use so that it doesn't get too messy. Thank um, so those are a top three of basic skincare products that work really well for busting blackheads. Now, two special treatments that you might want to look into as well. JJ Young also has a pore erasing stick, and that one is a more intensive treatment. It removes sebum and blackheads from the, from the T-zone is what it's supposed to be used for. And basically they've blended rice and oat flour along with charcoal, cacao, tea tree, lavender, and eucalyptus. So that is a great option for keeping skin clear of congestion. And it's really, really cheap and cheerful. So keep an eye out for that one. It's basically just a thinner, slim, more slender version of the black cleansing stick, but with a slightly different formula that is supposed to be used a little bit more intensively. And the other product is Subi's Hollow Dream Brightening Pore Refining Mask. So that is a great one for deep cleansing, tightening the pores, uh, and just taking care of congestion and dead skin. And obviously being a hollow product, it leaves your skin with this really lovely, subtle sheen that just makes your skin look like glowing. It kind of looks like you've just put on like a primer, I guess. So that is a really great one if you have an event or, you know, you just want your skin to look better than it does on its own. Um, it's kind of like a two-in-one product. So check those out if you guys are in the market for uh, some products that do target blackheads in particular in the K-beauty world. Uh, they are the recommendations that I had for you guys. So that is all I had for you today. If you did like today's episode, don't forget you can sign up to Style Stories newsletter and have all the latest K-beauty tips, our product testing opportunities, and our exclusive discount codes delivered straight to your inbox. So we've got a testers program going um, that we've been doing now pretty much all year uh, where when new releases come out, we send them out to the people that want to try them basically um, and you can try them review them and let us know your honest opinions about them so I know one of the recent rounds of the testers club we had open I think we had like 300 people apply to be testers so obviously we couldn't choose everyone but we've got some really great products that are going up as testing products so do get on the style story newsletter list if that sounds like something that you would like to be involved in basically if you like testing products and telling people what you really think then that is a good one for you to get on as well all right that is all i had for you so i'm gonna leave it there um and i will be back next week as per usual with another episode for you guys so i hope you have a great rest of the week and i will chat to you then 